Follow me. They're today's boys and girls, full of energy. Hello. And to America's business leaders, full of potential. They are convinced that without an investment in early childhood, the workforce they need to do the work of the 21st century will not be there. No. To build the workforce of tomorrow, business leaders and organizations have joined forces nationwide through the Partnership for America's Economic Success. To the partnership, investing in early childhood development is pro-business and pro-economic growth. These policy changes will help children become the adults, the customers, the employees, the neighbors that our country needs to thrive. In fact, the evidence on early learning shows that children who enter kindergarten ready to succeed grow up to be the adaptable, skilled, team-capable, job-ready workers who help businesses thrive. Human capital is our competitive advantage. In order to um, reduce the instances of high school dropout rates and lack of completion in high school, we need to invest in all levels of education at all stages. In Virginia, pro-business investment meant convincing lawmakers to erase funding cuts aimed at pre-K and child care. It worked and funding was restored. You have to connect the dots. So a child who is well cared for between birth and age five uh, is more likely to uh, read at grade level at grade three, graduate from high school, go on to a trade school or, or university and become a productive member of the workforce. In Alabama, outreach by business leaders made early childhood education a bipartisan election issue with strong statements of support by both candidates. In Texas, Business leaders helped win increases in early childhood funding in 2010. And what Six Sigma says is, look, just don't have to fix it later. Get it right the first time. And most large organizations, including Continental, have lots of elements of that. And one of the shocking things about education is we've never taken an approach to say, okay, well, here's how we're going to remediate, here's how we're going to clean it up, here's how we're going to fix it. Well, that, that was business's approach 20 years ago. And it changed to say, no, how do we get it right the first time? How do we make sure we get this done the correct way? How do we make sure we build the base right? Because we know if we start with bad parts, we're going to have to take it offline and fix it later. Well, the equivalent of that is ignoring zero to five. Why get involved now? Supporters say first to lay the groundwork for economic growth. As we come out of this and into a better time, we're able to put money for young children into programs that we've really thought through, we've examined, we're confident they'll produce the outcomes we want. So I look at this as a planning opportunity and not a downturn. Second, because of the retirement numbers. By 2018, all but the youngest baby boomers will be of retirement age. That's 76 million boomers retiring. It's not clear there'll be enough skilled workers to replace them. A recent study by Georgetown University predicts that in the same year, 63% of people will need some college education in order to find a job. Business leaders say the economy's future depends on sound investing. It's not charity. We are for social good, but we're also very much trying to understand how to take our time and our resources and spend them in the best way possible. And if we are hopeful to have a strong economy, long term, we're going to have to have a very strong talent base. That's really going to be what determines, I think, whether countries succeed or fail. The partnership can help. I'm asking you to join me and thousands of other business people in a coalition to focus on human capital and especially on these critical early years prenatal to five. The partnership has helped organize summits in half the states, engaging thousands of business and civic leaders to learn how to communicate with policymakers to affect change. The best way to get to the state senators and state representatives is to request one-on-one -on -one meetings. Be prepared, not, don't expect any more than 15 minutes with them, but go with a message and if you could, try to get them to an early childhood center. If you could bring them to a center and they see the kids and you got your data, you're going to have a successful meeting. What the partnership enables me to do is have the languaging, the resources, as well as the concepts that connect with people outside the legislature and also in the general community. National business organizations back the partnership's work, including the Institute for a Competitive Workforce, an affiliate of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It's good for companies and the economy. Early childhood is a very important issue for the business community for economic reasons alone, both in terms of the return on investment, which we all value from 
but also thinking about competitiveness, regional competitiveness, state competitiveness, international competitiveness of our workforce. Recognition by business leaders that the health of the future economy depends on investments the evidence shows grow the most. And it's going to make us